On March 5, 1915, Charles Hook sent a memo to George M. Verity, founder and president of the American Rolling Mill Company. Dear Sir, during your absence in the month of February, the question of a new mill was suggested by Mr. J.B. Titus. The new mill Hook was referring to was an idea John Butler Titus had been wrestling with since he was first employed at the Young Steel Company located in Middletown, Ohio. In 1904, Titus was put to work as a spare hand on a sheet mill at the Central Works on Curtis Street and soon learned firsthand the difficult process of flattening red-hot bars into stacks of steel sheets. By 1914, John Titus had risen to superintendent of Omco Zanesville Works and he was still thinking about a more efficient way to roll steel. Observing the process, Titus counted 22 times that sheets were handled, and according to his biographers and local historians, Titus is said to have commented to General Superintendent Charles Hook, Someday, Charlie, we will be making steel in long strips like they make paper. The March 1915 memo to Verity was seeking the authority to proceed with experiments to test Titus's radical new concept. That same month, Armco received its first order for armaments for the Allied effort in Europe during World War I, and the company stayed at full production until the armistice in 1918. After the war ended, the steel market slowed, and when officers of the Ashland Iron and Mining Company decided to sell their operation, Armco acquired the Ashland, Kentucky facility. In 1921, John Titus and a team of 100 rollers, engineers, and machinists were sent to Ashland to build their new mill. After several years of trial and error, they would finally get their chance to develop the first continuous sheet steel mill. About $10 million was needed to invest in the new machine, an amount that could destroy the company if the idea failed. But Verity and the company had faith that Titus and his men would succeed. Titus had studied the flat metal rolling process for years, including a concept drawn by Leonardo da Vinci. In 1919, when he first presented the idea, Titus explained it in this way. In all, 14 stands of rolls are envisioned in a straight line, which will reduce red-hot 5-inch thick slabs into thin steel sheets. Five factors controlling the process are essential. Temperature of rolls, composition and springiness of rolls, the screw pressure applied to roll necks, and the shape, composition, and temperature of the piece. In 1924, after years of fixing problems and struggling with the mill, it was in full operation. By the end of the first full month of operation, the new continuous mill produced 9,000 tons of sheet steel. The industry journal Iron Age called it epic making and a monumental example of the scientific approach to a major manufacturing problem. By 1927, the mill was producing 40,000 tons per month with much better quality. The steel industry took notice and between 1927 and 1940, 26 continuous rolling mills were built.
John Titus became a vice president of Armco and received industry recognition for his achievement. From its beginning in 1900, the American Rolling Mill Company had created a culture of innovation and it was that guiding principle that led to the development of the continuous steel shield mill that revolutionized the steel industry. As one writer put it, innovation is the highest form of labor because of its capacity to create labor for others.